Hey guys, I'm doing something here that probably some of you are not going to approve of. Is the right way, and I'm not. I'm not claiming this is the right way to to, uh, to do this. This is just something that I'm doing after a flush the proper way. Um, um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm swapping out clutch fluid um, in here in the uh, master cylinder, and I'm siphoning. I'm siphoning it out just. And I'll show you what I'm doing, uh, and then I'm refilling it. Um, so I'm just going to get started, and I'll write a little bit in the thread and talk about it, I guess, as I'm doing it. Uh, and I understand this is not the proper way to completely change your clutch fluid. I've already changed this once, but it's, it's getting, it's, I don't know if it's got debris in it or what, but it's continually getting a little dark for my taste. So... Uh, it's not, it's not overtly that way, but I'm just trying to do what I can to, to get it as clean as I can. It's kind of like it would be similar to changing your oil every 100 or, two, or, or every 500 miles for uh, three or four times to really just try to clean out, say, sludge or something. It's not that bad in here, and I don't have really bad problems with my clutch. My clutch is not holding on the ground or anything. But just for a DIY, obviously your cover, take off your brake fluid cover. Uh, and just set it aside uh, and then under here you're gonna have your uh, brake master cylinder and then to the to the the smaller of the two is going to be your clutch master cylinder okay so if any of you guys want to try this it's not going to hurt your car you just there's a few things you have to keep in mind and first uh, advice to uh, make sure these tops are clean. I'm not going to take off the brake, but I go ahead and clean it up while I'm at it. I just got some uh, air duster here, which mine are pretty clean already because I've been doing this for the past uh, three or four weeks or so. I get that, and then uh, <laughs> and then wipe it down real good because you don't want any debris to fall into your fluid. I mean, it's not going to kill it, but if you, you know, whatever you can prevent is best. So before you open this, and it even probably says it on the caps, I believe, to really clean these well. Okay. And I set up like this <laughs> because brake fluid, believe it or not, is really caustic. It, it's a really caustic chemical and uh, you get a little bit on your paint, uh, it will eat through that stuff, you know. Uh, so you definitely don't want to get on your paint. If you do, definitely wash your car um, or wash that area anyways quite well, quite thoroughly. So, but, and I also, you know, I just put a little rag up under the whole deal just to kind of, you know, you, the goal is not, is not to spill it in the first place, but, you know, any precaution is good. So I put a little rag up under there. And then I get another one and kind of put it over here, just where I'm going to have the bottle you'll see that I'm going to take out the other fluid and replace it with. And this is what you'll need, just some type of container. I'm just using a, you know, sports drink bottle, you know, just off the side. And <coughs> it's your choice of fluids. I have them both here, I believe. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you. You can, uh, this is uh, Dot 3. Uh, you just want a decent brand, a known brand. Uh, Dot 3, and that's what our car manual is going to tell you it recommends is Dot 3 brake fluid. Uh, Dot 4 is what I'm using. Uh, it's just basically, from my understanding, Dot 4 is, uh, withstands uh, higher temps, okay? So higher temperature, dot four. And from all the reading I've done, dot four will not hurt your system. Even though it says dot three in the manual, dot four is fine. Now go do your own research always before doing this stuff. I, I don't want to be responsible for, you know, your uh, slave or master cylinder going out or your clutch pedal dropping to the floor or whatnot because you followed this. So uh, uh, if you want to be safe, stick with dot three, it's going to be fine. 
it, and it's what uh, the owner's manual recommends. For me, I went with dot four due to the issues, small minor issues, because the main deal is is my clutch pedal felt feels a little, or it felt now it's okay. It felt a little funny uh, as I was shifting uh, once it got up to like four or five, six thousand RPM. So I put it in a higher temp fluid, and after a few flushings, it's 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 gotten it's the whole system is dot four now. So it uh it really uh it's made a big difference it, and it's also made that for whatever reason it's made my cl clutch pedal a little bit lighter to press now i that doesn't make a lot of sense because pressure is pressure in, hyd in, in hydraulics uh but you know the old fluid that was in it was from two from 2008 so that is, i mean that was definitely needed i don't have much left of this but i do have enough to fill this tiny reservoir that goes with the uh that is the clutch uh, master cylinder up top. The slave cylinder on, and this is a 2008 VQ 35HR. The slave cylinder on this engine is actually uh, uh, in the tranny. I believe it's inside the tranny. I know you have to pull the tranny to get it. So, but you guys that have the the uh, DE engines, you can. I believe I haven't looked at one myself close enough to, to know but from what I think I've read is if you have a DE 03 to 06 you know uh, definitely 03 to 05 that you can change your slave cylinder without having to pull your transmission and that's you know that's obviously a huge huge difference okay enough talking about that so I'm going with dot four again because uh, that's what I've got in the system right now and I've even read that you can mix dot three and dot four. So you could pull out a little bit of dot three, put some dot four in there, and do this process a few times over and over, and it would be the majority dot four in time. Um, now, some people don't agree with that. Some people won't agree with this whole process, uh, okay? And uh, so that's just some things I've read. Do your own research, as, as I'm saying. Uh, but... This clutch cylinder here, and, and if you're wondering why I'm using brake fluid, if you haven't ever done this stuff or read about it, uh, it's just hydraulic fluid. Your brake, I mean your clutch, uh, uses the same exact fluid as your brakes. It's just using hydraulic pressure, so it's going to use uh, the same type of fluid. And so dot three, the exact same thing that's, that's going in your brakes, master cylinder is going in your clutch master cylinder. So. That makes it pretty easy. <clears throat> There's no special brake, I mean clutch fluid. I mean, you can find it that says clutch, but it's just brake fluid. So make sure you match up the dots. You don't want to put dot two or something in there or dot five. I think the big difference, <laughs> the big deal with it is from what I've read is you don't want to put a silicone based fluid in here, okay? Or I don't know if it's silicone or if it's uh, synthetic. Which I believe dot five. I believe, I believe there's a dot five uh, that's either synthetic or silicone or both. I'm not sure, uh, but you don't want to do that. So dot three, dot four, and read on the back. Make sure it's safe. I mean, I mean, even on the back of this dot four brake fluid, it says um, it says uh, recommended for all ABS disc and drum brake systems as well as. Hydraulic clutches requiring dot three and dot four fluids. It is safe to mix with any dot three or dot four brake fluid or clutch fluid meets or exceeds dot three and dot four uh, specifications. So I mean, even on the back of this, and they're pretty cautious with, with what they say on these on the labels at the back of these things. It even says what I'm saying. So you know, and this is what I use. I just went to local Walmart, whatever you got. If you got Walmart's, they're great. Just wherever you can find it, and I got a syringe. Get this off far enough that you can see it. It's just basically a syringe. You could use like a tur turkey baster, I guess, but it's just a syringe with a piece of I don't know what millimeter tube this is, but looks like about six, maybe eight millimeter. Uh, and it just basically you pull back, and it's going to create a suction and pull up into it, and then you're going to move it over to the container and push it out push down on the syringe and push it out and that's the whole principle of it and that makes this somewhat easy to do so 
Little tip here on the clutch. You don't have to do this, but it's it's it, it's just bolted in there with two thing, two uh, nuts and bolts on a little bracket coming off. So I personally like to kind of hold this with with my other hand uh, while I take this top off because it is a little tight because you don't because I don't want to just yank up and down on that thing really hard. So I've got this off, and you can even wipe this this area in here off if you like. I'll do that for the heck of it. I'm gonna use a different, I'm gonna use a paper towel here to do so. Uh, it's just kind of another deal, especially if you're if you're doing this for the first time and you get really dirty fluid. It's just another one of those, you know, doing it right. It takes you a couple seconds, right? Plus this keeps this from dripping on any other area of your car if you happen to set, set the cap somewhere. That's, that's, that could be in a uh, spot that could be in a spot that's uh, that could you know drip on your paint or whatnot. So one reason it's taking me a little more than a second is because I'm trying to get down in the actual grooves behind this lip. There's two little lips here to get it completely off. And I just set my caps wherever it's handy. You know, somewhere it's not going to get in your way. That's fine. And my fluid looks pretty good actually. But I'm doing this, <laughs> this is going to be the last time that I'm going to do this. Because um, I've done it uh, two or three times already. So, here we go. Get this, this thing ready to take the old fluid. Put the cap somewhere. Get this thing. And, and this one that I bought is, is very cheap. This is like a dollar. And it's, not, it's, it, it's really kind of tough to, to pull back on. Still does the job, so you know if you do this a lot, which you won't, you shouldn't be doing this a lot unless you track your car. Uh, if you track your car, this might be even uh, better. Uh, this might even be a better solution than actually <clears throat> going down there and doing the full drain. Is to just pull out the reservoir uh, each time you track it and put in some fresh fluid. Uh, and that'll help keep it clean because uh, tracking your car does really hurt fluid, especially brake fluid. Uh, it you know it's just, it's just a lot heavier usage of it. Uh, so let's get this. And I would advise when you're in here, you're going to see a tube leading up to the reservoir. Okay, and when you use this to extract it, try to leave. Uh, a little bit up to at least the line where that tube goes in the hole so you don't get air in the system okay um, and I think that's probably going to be the biggest argument other people are going to have with this there's going to be two arguments and one of them is going to be don't do this because you could introduce air into the system which is possible and uh, secondarily I can see people saying don't do this because it's going to be ineffective. You're just going to pull out of the reservoir and put new fluid in there and it's not getting mixed through your system. So it's, it's a waste of time and money and so on. Uh, I agree with the first thing. I agree that it can put air, air in your system if you're not careful with how low you go with it. <coughs> uh, but the second one I disagree with, especially uh, you can take this and uh, and remove, you know, the whole reservoir or the majority of it, and then put new fluid in. Go into your car, pump the clutch pedal 30 times or so. Uh, maybe even put the top back on and go drive around, you know, 10 minutes. Come back, uh, pull it out, put it back in. Do that a few times, and you will see the fluid. If you're doing this the first time and you've got old fluid in there. You will see the fresh fluid you just put in after you've pumped the clutch and, and, and uh, driven your car for a little bit. It's gotten dirty. And there's no way that would have gotten dirty unless the other fluid has cycled in there and mixed with it. So I've personally done that myself and seen that. Is this as good as going down there and bleeding out your whole clutch system? Heck no. But is this a lot easier and a lot quicker? Yes. So I've done them both. And um, it's just something that 
uh, I think is is kind of handy. I, it, like nobody ever told me about this, but it makes sense. So I'm going to pull it out just a little bit. I mean, this reservoir really holds nothing. I don't even know what the what the uh, amount is here. I guess I can measure it in this syringe, but it's it's nothing. You'll see. You probably already know what it looks like. Here I go. I'm pulling it out, leaving enough to not cause air and then I get this and I bend it to hold it in because it will drain out of that tube and then I get it get the tube put it over that over my container and push it in and then I, I did it twice just to make sure I get it all out of there pretty much <clears throat> so now I fold out and this is fairly clean as you can see it's not too bad I've done this but it was really dirty it, it, it's a little used. It doesn't take long for the stuff to get uh, a little, I don't know, burnt or what, but it's a still fine color. I mean, this would be fine for a long time. Uh, I'll put this over here. I'll leave my syringe in it. And this is the part I found that you do have to be a little careful with. Um, pouring it in, okay? Uh, I mean, you'll see a min max on there. So if your car is cold, you know, pour it down to the min. At the most, put it between the min and the max. Uh, don't put it all the way up to the max on a cold car. If your car is already warm uh, or even hot, then you could pretty safely put it up to close to max. Okay? That's my guidelines. This does. I'm not a professional mechanic. Uh, so, take it with a grain of salt, obviously. And don't use old brake fluid. Uh, uh, that's another thing. Uh, a fresh brand new bottle with a seal on it that you've broken is best. This bottle is about uh, two weeks maybe old, something like that. So, and I've kept the lid on very tight. It's not outside and, and it's not in a high moisture environment. So I'm confident this doesn't have a ton of moisture in it. Uh, or any moisture of that matter. Of that. So, I'm just going to be careful here. And when this is full, it's obviously a lot more difficult to pour without spilling. Uh, but my car is relatively warm, so I'm going to put it just a little about halfway between the lines there, a little higher than that. And you can see, I'll, I'll get the camera off and show you, and that's all I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to leave that off. Okay, and whenever you close your brake uh, fluid, if you plan on using it again, try to get it pretty tight. So, you know, you want that to be a nice seal. And uh, I don't know what the shelf life of brake fluid is, but I personally probably wouldn't keep it more than a year. And even at a year, I'd be kind of hesitant because it's not very expensive. It's just a few dollars a bottle, and <laughs> it doesn't take much. So I'd probably buy it brand new uh, if you had it more than a couple of months, six months, say. Uh, anyways, let me get the camera off here and I'll show you what the color of this now looks like compared to what I just pulled off that I had changed. So you can see here, that's the new fluid and that's the color. So the old fluid, old fluid, there, new fluid. So it, it even replacing it not that long ago, it's already changed that much. And you can see my brake fluid. It looks pretty dark in the container. I've already wiped this top off to show it to you. It's well, you can't really see because of the filter there. But I've already checked it. It's not bad. The brakes were done when I bought this in December, uh, and they put and they drained it and put brand new brake fluid in it. So the brake fluid, I'm not worried about it at all. The brakes work absolutely phenomenal on this car. And then this top, again, I'm using doing one hand here, but you want to kind of hold that bottom. And I want to keep this that way so it works. You want to kind of hold that bottom when you push this top on so you don't put too much pressure on it. That's just the way I like to do it. And then I spin this around because it has two clasps here. 
is it, you don't really have to spin it, but I just do it anyways. And I just kind of wipe around here and get out my rag, and we're pretty good. Get your top. Stick that back in the groove, and you're on. You know, these little lights are handy as well. Uh, obviously, you can do this without a light. There's a nice little hook here uh, under your hood. So you can just get one of these shop lights. I've had this light for probably 10 or 13 years, and not gone dead it's just I don't know how long it's gonna last but it's a great light and then secondarily I guess you could go in here just to double check you could uh, get in your car and here's my new pedals which is too dark so I don't think you're gonna be able to see this but I love them uh, as you could go in here and pump your uh, clutch pedal a bit just to make sure it's got good pressure and uh, even start your car up. Let's see here. Make sure you've got good pressure with it. So you didn't screw anything up, obviously. So, obviously, this has nothing to do with your oil pressure, but uh, you know, pumping my. Uh, Clutch a few, few times, and I can hear it when it's in. No throwout bearing, throwout bearing, no throwout bearing, throwout bearing. You know, it's, it's got a great feel to it. And you may even notice if you shift it, and you know, you can mess with the shifter if you like. But that's good. You may even notice if you put dot four, or even or even just replace it with three. I noticed that the clutch pedal felt a lot smoother um, than it previously did. Yeah, I wish you could see those pedals, but I've got a picture of them. Uh, so that's that. So that is changing your clutch fluid, and like I said, one time is not is not going to be enough. You're going to have to do it. Uh, at least two or three times to uh, get the old fluid mixed back in and but you don't want to do it right away uh, what I've been doing is uh, is is driving it for a week or so and then doing that which when I'm not recording takes all of all of maybe five minutes the most and uh, you've got and you're done and then Drive it for a week, do it again, drive it for a week, do it again. And then you can kind of judge by the color and the way things feel. And if it improves any of your issues, if you're having any issues, <clears throat> that's the only reason I would do it. If you're not having any issues, you know, don't bother. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? And I just keep my uh, syringe in this plastic bag, what I've been doing, just because I don't want the brake fluid to get on anything. It's a nice little area. So we'll go in there. Keep it out of the way for the next time. The light decided to fall down. That's it. I guess I need to get the rag out. As with everything, don't leave anything in. So I hope, hope that helps you out if you plan on doing it. And once again, um, this is. Um, Definitely, it, it, it's it's a controversial thing, I guess. I mean, not hugely controversial, but it's something that <laughs> not everybody's going to agree with doing that. Uh, if you have the means and the, and the time, definitely do the full bleed from the bottom. Jack your car up. You know, it's not very hard uh, to do it. Uh, when I did it, I took off my front wheel, jacked it up. Uh, and it took me, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe at the most. And I had it bled all the way through. But um, I've just done that afterwards because I've noticed a difference doing it. And that's probably the last time I'm going to do it. I just wanted to record that the last time I did it. 
So uh, if it helps you, great. If you don't agree with it or don't want to do it or you have issues with it, feel free to say what you want. You know, opinions are opinions, but I understand uh, the reasons not to do it. So take care.